Welcome to Bennett's Bike Social, welcome to beautiful southern Spain and welcome to the launch of Triumph's new Tiger 900. Now for 2024, Triumph have simplified the Tiger range. So you've essentially got the GT, the GT Pro and then the Rally Pro. Now let me run you through the differences before I give you the updates. So the GT Pro is the premium 19 inch front wheel Tiger from Triumph. So we've got 19 inch front wheel, kind of more road biased adventure bike, electronic rear suspension and conventional manual adjustable suspension on the front. The Rally is fully adjustable suspension, higher seat, more travel on the suspension, 21 inch front wheel, more catered for off-road riding. So if you want to go more road, you go in 19. If you want to go more off-road, it's 21. That simplifies the range, makes it much, much easier for Triumph because before I think they had 27 different models of Triumph Tiger to opt from and now it's a lot easier and a lot simpler. So the big talking point for 2024 is the improvement in performance. Still 888 capacity from that really distinctive T-plane crank triple engine built in Hinkley. But they've put new pistons in, new cams, revised the exhaust, the intake has all been redone. So despite having the same capacity, we've got an improvement in performance. We've gone up from 93.9 horsepower to 106.5, which essentially is 13% more power. But they haven't reduced the torque and just gone for the top end. Down at the bottom, it's around about the same, and then it just increases from around 5,000 RPM onwards and revs a little bit higher. In terms of torque, we're up a fraction, but not a huge amount. In terms of tech, we've now got the TFT clocks that were on the big 1200 adventure. So we've got new tech, we've got more power, we've got slight design tweaks, and we've got a really premium and high level finish. So we've got like on the Pro, we've got heated seat for rider and pillion, we've got cruise control, we've got heated grips, adjustable screen, TFT connectivity. This is a really premium bike. And in this category, it's not jumped up in price either. So prices are, 12195 for the basic, 13895 for the Pro, and 14495 for the Rally Pro, which isn't a massive jump over what it was previously. Today we've had the opportunity to ride on the road. So we've been jumping between the JT Pro and the Rally Pro. Hola! Welcome to Southern Spain! We're just in the off-road mode because we are on some kind of roads that go from well, time out to gravel pretty quickly. And uh, just in the standard off-road mode, we've got no ABS on the rear, but some ABS on the front. Oh, sorry, cat. And the traction control is uh, not lean sensitive anymore, but still uh, active in that it's letting me slide a little bit, but controlling it. So it's done on wheel speed rather than uh, lean angle. But yeah, that was a good demonstration of how versatile the bike is, jumping from gravel and back. So just in the standard road mode, again, I'd just like that to be a bit bigger. And then now I can press that on the left bar and just scroll through from road, terrain, to sport. Give it a tick. Close the throttle, and we should be in sport. Go back to the home screen. Sport is derived by a different symbol, but just not that clear. And when you're riding, you can't go into any mode that turns off the TC or changes the ABS. So really, when you're riding, you've just got the rain, the sport, and the road. But then when you're stationary, then you can switch into the off-road modes. There's a real significant difference between the two models, as you'd expect with the amount of suspension travel and size of wheels. But despite the Rally Pro having that long travel suspension and catered for off-road ability, it's still very compliant on the road, very comfortable, very easy to ride, very manageable. And when you do rev it, you do feel that increase in power. It kind of feels the same as the old bike to about 5,000 RPM and then it just revs round to a few occasions where I was changing gear a little too early because it'll, 
it will rev even more than you was expecting it. You're on a big, comfy, big adventure bike and you don't expect it to rev as much as it does and it just gives it that extra zap, that extra gnarl of performance, that extra kick. And we're, as I say, we're over 100 horsepower now, so it's got some real go about it. The GT Pro's got exactly the same engine, the same exhaust zone, the exact same snarl, but it's just a little bit easier to manage. There's less suspension travel, there's less movement, it feels more nimble, it feels lighter, it feels easier to turn. Some of the heavier riders on test have had a little issue with ground clearance touching the pegs, but I've not had an issue all day. Maybe because I'm not riding as fast and maybe it's because I'm shorter and lighter. But it's definitely more road focused than the Rally Pro. In terms of comfort, both are pretty similar. You've got the manually adjustable screen, you've got cruise control, you've got the heated grips and you've got the heated seat, which we've had on today because of the uh, temperatures early this morning. The suspension takes every imperfection that you can throw at it. Again, on the rally, I was expecting it to kind of blow through the stroke quite a lot, but it doesn't. It's really nicely controlled. On the GT Pro, you have the electronic rear shock. It's not semi-active, but essentially the rear shock changes depending in, on what mode you're in. So if you're in rain mode, you've obviously got quite a soft setup. If you're going to road, it, there's less. And then if you're going to sport, you can change it again. And also you can change these if you want by changing on the fly. So you can actually change the amount of preload in the rear shock as you're going. It's not semi-active and the front is still manually adjustable. The reason behind that is it's designed to be an adventure bike that's going to carry luggage in a pillion. So you're asking a lot of different changes of the rear. So when you add luggage, when you add pillion, when you're cruising. So now you can electronically change the rear shock on the fly. With the fully adjustable shower system on the rally, it's all manually adjustable, which I guess that's going to be catered for those people who are really going to attack some off-road. On the road, I didn't feel the need to change it. I guess if I added a pillion and luggage, I'd want to change it. And tomorrow when we try some off-road, again, I might want to change it just to control it if we're doing any extreme jumps or hitting some hard terrain. But in perfect standard setup, I didn't feel the need to change either bike. In terms of a downside, for me, the TFT clocks are really clear, really neat, and uh, really well uh, lit up. The sunlight doesn't affect them, and they're quite easy to read. But when you're changing it, they're quite slow to kind of move from one screen to the other. And there's a few occasions where I kind of got lost in the menus. So you've just got like the rev counter, the fuel gauge, and the speedo. You'll see this on the GoPro. But when you want to see the trip or you want to see the range, you've got to go within a mode, within a mode. And it sometimes gets a little bit confusing when you're changing the modes. When you go from one mode to the other, you think it's changed and it hasn't because there's just a bit of a delay. It's probably something I'm going to get more used to. And this morning it was a little annoying and by three, four o'clock this afternoon it wasn't so much because I was more used to the system. But this is just day one. Tomorrow is day two and we're going to go off-road, hence the off-road looking tyres on the rally. We're going to the adventure school here that Triumph have in southern Spain where we get to put the rally through its paces. In terms of their road ability, the same comfort, the kind of same premium quality, the same sound as the old Tiger. There was a great bike that was introduced in 2020, but now you've got more zip, more grunt. It's still lovely and soft and really nicely fueled below 5,000, but then at 5,000 it just kind of rap, wants to go again. You've got that extra flow, that extra grunt and that extra drivability. But tomorrow's another day. Let's see how that performance equates off-road. Will it be a little bit too much performance? We'll find out because the Rally Pro has got two off-road settings, off-road and off-road pro. So we're going to play with those settings tomorrow. We're going to play with more off-road bias tires and we're going to try it out at the Triumph Adventure School here in Malaga. So this is pretty epic. <laughs> Look at the plane there. <laughs> we can wave at people landing at Malaga. Over there is the snow, which is like the Sierra Nevada, kind of where Almeria is. Over there is the beach and the sea. It's just been some beautiful riding. So today is off-road day. See you guys! So we're on the rally, obviously, because we're off-road. 21 inch front wheel, off-road tyres. Uh, off-road bias suspension, fully shower front and rear. The only change is we've gone for more off-road bias tired tires <laughs> than yesterday 
and because I'm on the pro I've got two off-road modes just a standard off-road and the off-road pro if I go for the pro I got no traction no ABS and if I go to the just the standard off-road I've got a little bit of off-road bias ABS and off-road bias TC but apart from the uh, off-road bias tyres this is just a standard Tiger 900 At Bennett's Bike Social we did the on-road test yesterday we tested the Rally and the GT Pro we both did them on-road today has been off-road just on the Rally which is obvious to use the Rally because it's got the longer travel fully adjustable suspension, the more ground clearance, and the crash protection. Um, two modes on the Rally Pro, you've got off-road and off-road pro. In off-road, you've got ABS on the front, which is conventional, it's not lean sensitive, and you've got no traction on the rear, and you've got a dedicated throttle map for off-road. In off-road pro, you've got no TC on the front, uh, sorry, no ABS on the front, no traction control on the rear, it's just free and you can do what you want, with the same throttle map. Now I thought the throttle map might have restricted the power, but it's actually full power in off-road mode. So if you go to 100% throttle, it opens the butterflies and you've got 100% power. And there is a lot of power. I'll be honest, I didn't have huge high expectations for the Tiger. I've ridden the old Tiger off-road and it was good off-road, but I wouldn't say it was amazing off-road. But the new Tiger feels very different. It's got real nice power delivery um, in the off-road mode. The off-road ABS works really well. For a relatively inexperienced rider, I don't think you're gonna get in too much trouble riding the Tiger off-road. That ABS is really good and the throttle delivery is really nice. And then for me, I flicked it into the uh, off-road pro, which means no traction, no ABS, and really let it flow. And it really surprised me what this Tiger can do. It's really impressive off-road, considering this is the same bike that we rode on-road yesterday, just with different tyres. This is just cool. Just riding, small group. Kind of nice trails. Not too dusty. 15 degrees. Ah, lovely. Oh, a bit rocky there though. <laughs> the tyres are really good, they're just finding grip. They feel pretty good on the road as well. Different tyres to yesterday, trying to obviously put a bit more, yeah, swap the tyres, which you would do if you were riding, you know, on these type of trails. But the bike that we rode and had foot on yesterday, we're now hitting trails with confidence. And the good bit, is with this off-road ABS and the off-road TC, you know, you can have some fun and, you know, it's relatively safe on a 230-ish kilogram bike. Oh, a bit more mud. Oh, look at this. I mean, it's rare in the UK that we get trails like this, but... Woohoo! So we just tried the off-road pro. Don't know why I'm saying off in second. Which means now I've got no ABS front or rear, no traction. Just up tree. Just me. It'd be nice to go a little bit quicker, but to be honest, I have ridden these type of roads before in Spain. And you come around one of these, I mean, that is a proper drop. And, and before you know it, there's a Fiat Panda around the corner. <laughs> Triumph have got an adventure school here up in the hills near Managa. So if you want to come and do this kind of stuff, Check Triumph out online. They've got scramblers and tigers, I believe. Um, 
we have got more horsepower as we explained yesterday but you don't really notice that so much off-road there's a few places where you can open the gas in third and fourth because we're on open fire traps here in Spain but in the UK you're probably not going to notice that but I guess the big question mark for the Tiger is going to be the competition because when you start going off-road on a middleweight adventure bike you've got KTM and you've got Husqvarna and here at Bike Social we'll be testing BMW's new 900 GS shortly and we'll be testing Honda's new Africa Twin very shortly so that's going to be the big asking point and the big question how good are those bikes going to be against this and when we get them all in a big group test that'll be the big reveal but in terms of what Triumph have done for the Tiger they've improved the impeal they've improved the performance I think it's a stunning looking bike it's not gone up in price and it's got a very high specification that the others are going to struggle to match at this price. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, because it's been a little complicated with two bikes, I'll try and answer them below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.